welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and that is the R in the R case stumbling bear. I am a reader and a writer. And today I am here to talk about Lightblade by Zamil Akhtar. That is one of our semi-finalist books for the self-published science fiction contest the year two. I actually finished this book a couple weeks ago, but I needed time to think about it and get my own thoughts in line. There were things that I really like about it and things that I don't like so much. And I find the things that I don't like as much is more of craft issues and not so much story, but we'll get into that. This book follows Giosh, who is in a political prisoner labor camp at the beginning of the book and he has just altered his dream stone in order to use a light blade training program so that he can kill the emperor who's supposed to visit his factory within three days. Now this is where we get into the science fiction part because all, everybody's bodies have been modified to accept different stones and the colors relate to the light that their bodies take in from the sun. When you're thinking of the visual spectrum, we have the sun has light waves and our eyes perceive colors based off of different factors. In this world, the, these stones allow people to take that different colored light, run it through their veins to do different things. and dream stones are orange and so when they absorb orange light it helps them sleep these dream stones give them the capability of while they're sleeping they can basically lucid dream and hence live some days in their dream world if i remember correct i think it's every hour you're asleep it's a day in the dream world basically and then there's more intricacies as you go through the book and as you get a more complex stone so Josh's in this prison camp and he finds that his memories of why he wanted to kill the Emperor have disappeared and he doesn't know so he's trying to figure out why did I want to kill the Emperor and as he's trying to search that out he realizes that he has there's some other memories that are missing things that have propelled him to get his dream stone altered and he doesn't remember why but he's not exactly happy with the choices that have been made or with the results of them anyway. And then another country invades the country he's in and he escapes out of the prison camp. With the aid of his Dreamstone trainer, he is then trying to get out of the country to, so he can be a refugee in another country. And the neighboring countries have or have quotas only so many people can come in or you have to have a lottery to get on like a ship that is leaving have the right number kind of thing so as he's journeying trying to get to a place where he can get out he ends up getting injured and taken to a place to recover he was healed by another group that came in to give refugee you know, war aid and ends up by a mythical city that has been lost. Things go from there. Con number one, the, the plot of the story changed so much from the beginning to the end that it's hard to follow as you're going. Once you get to the end and you get the wrap up, then you can see how the different elements have got, have taken you there. But the journey to get there can be frustrating because you start off with, he wants to kill the emperor. Great. He doesn't remember why. What's going on? And those messy memories don't get addressed until the very end of the book. And for me, it wasn't very satisfying how that was wrapped up. But it does make sense with the story and all, everything else that has happened. A pro for me was the use of the stones and how like, just technology is used in this world. My group was having a bit of a debate of whether this is fantasy or science fiction. And 
or a blend of both. And I was falling more, this is science fiction because you have the alteration of bodies in order to use technology. It doesn't matter if this is a secondary world. It, you're still, it's still fulfilling the science fiction parts for me. So I ended up going, it's a science fiction fantasy because it's secondary world has fantasy elements with the mess, but you're using technology, it's science fiction. And I liked how those elements played out and I think that Akhtar was very consistent. He didn't break the rules of the technology or how things worked. And I appreciate that. A con for me was this is a very plot driven story. So a lot of the times Josh is reacting to things that are happening versus making choices. And then when he gets to one point where he does make a choice, he decides he wants to go Instead of getting on a transport to get out of the country, he wants to go after his dream stone because he's fallen in love with his trainer. To me, that just seemed very weird and didn't wholly make sense. Again, the plot needed him to do that. I didn't feel as a character that that's actually where he was or what he would have done. I had gotten more that he was about his survival and a, tr a, a computer program is that important? I, I wouldn't have ranked that if you're trying to survive but he decides to go for the computer program and again when you get to the end it all wraps up it does but getting there felt very frustrating because I wasn't able to go on the journey with the character because the character was reacting to everything and not making the choices to go for a lot of the things. Other people might have a different view, but to me this is more of a plot-driven book which for me is more of a con because I like character driven. It's not a bad thing for, mo for other people though. A pro for me was how the author used the time when the character was dreaming. This is also known as a progression fantasy in that while they're dreaming, they're training, getting stronger. And that time in those dreams made sense, and it wasn't just about getting stronger. You did get more story elements, and so, and characters having to actually talk to one another. You got more background information, and it, it was an interesting way to give the the reader information and the characters. The character needed it too, and not just have the character the whole time, you know, leveling up. I'm stronger. I'm stronger. And I like that the leveling up was realistic. He didn't go from level 1 to level 50 in one dream day. So a con for me is some of the characters fell a little bit flat. At the beginning we really get Giosh and so you really get into his head. He feels real, but then when he meets up with Kaur and Sany, I think is her name, you don't really get a lot of depth of character from them and what you do get is more stereotypical or at least that's how I thought you have like the soft nurturing one who happens to be a healer and then you have a warrior who is always you know thinking of sex which was interesting that was interesting paired with a female character but it was still very much that trope of warrior character and all the sex jokes. It, so the side characters for me were really lacking in equality. And I think that is something that could have been cleaned up. I know that Akhtar has a, another series, but I still think he's a, a young author. And I don't think that this is going to continue to be a problem with them as he gets better at his craft and skill. I think this is more just a young author knowing that he wants his side characters to do certain things and interact a certain way 
and just hasn't yet developed how to expand that. So again, it, my issue is more of a craft side. The characters fulfill the need that are needed in the story, though. So I had a very interesting journey with this book. About 30%, I'm like, oh, I'm really liking it. About 60%, I'm like, I want to DNF this book. I'm really bored. But by the time I got to the end I'm, and got the answers to everything, it, it does wrap up the story. It does not leave you on a cliffhanger, which I'm so grateful for because I don't like those. And it left me conflicted because there was things I liked about the book and things I didn't like about the book. But I think I am on the side of, yes, I want to know what's going to happen next. And how the book wraps up, it does leave you with that impression that there will be another book, that there's more growing that Josh needs to do. And I'm curious to see what is going to happen with that. Or, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's going to be just kind of more open-ended like that. But the author did fulfill all the promises he made at the beginning of the book. It's just not concluded in a typical Western thinking, storytelling way. And that's not a bad thing. So especially if you're looking for more science fiction that is coming from international audiences, this would be a great one to pick up because the story is going to have a different rhythm to it. And overall, it worked for me. Again, I'm curious to know what happens next, and that is a sign of a good book, at least in my opinion. If you have read this book, I would love to know your opinion and what you thought of it. Let me know down below. Thank you, and have a great day.